Hi, I'm Carmen with the Singer Featherweight Shop. Today I want to walk you through the steps for oiling your Singer Featherweight. For this video we're going to use one of our demo machines. Now if a machine comes into the shop and it has uh, severe rust or damage of any kind, uh, instead of it being thrown out, we use it as a teaching tool. So this machine here, uh, my son came up with this idea, he's marked all the oiling points in bright orange paint. So as we walk through this video together, you should be able to see exactly where all the oiling points are and, uh, and follow along and do that at home as well. Now, the next thing let's talk about is the oil to use in your machine. Uh, you want to use sewing machine oil, uh, not things like 3-in-1. Uh, some of you prefer TriFlow, and TriFlow is a good oil to use as well. But basically, you want to use sewing machine oil. And it needs to be fairly new sewing machine oil. These cans right here, they still have oil in them, but you can see the dark color there. The oil has long since uh, varnished, and it would not be good to use those in your machine. So any of the metal cans or the glass bottles or whatever, uh, they're quite collectible. You can use them as a display item, but don't put that oil in your machine. We carry this oil here in the shop. Uh, the reason I like it is because of the long brass spout. It's easy to get uh, just one drop of oil to each of the oiling points. And so that's what we're going to use today for our video. Okay, before we get started, it would be a good idea to download and print our color-coded oiling chart, which can be found on our website, singer-featherweight.com, and then go to the schoolhouse section and maintenance and tutorials how to oil the machine. So the first thing you want to do is to remove the spool pin plate from the top of the machine using an appropriate size screwdriver holding your fingers down close to the tip to avoid any chance of the screwdriver slipping off and scratching your machine. Once that is done, as your diagram points out, there are six places across the top of the machine that need oiled, one drop for each oiling point, plus also one drop on the bobbin winder. Here they are again in slow motion. Remember, they only need one drop in each spot. And this next one is for the bobbin winder. Now the manual does show two oiling points for the bobbin winder. However, I prefer to not do the one because I want the bobbin winder to be somewhat stiff so that the pressure is held down on the belt. That's why I only prefer to do the one where it's spinning, not the arm itself. Okay, these next two spots are important. There is a vertical shaft that runs up through the neck of the machine and that shaft goes through two bronze bushings. It's high speed and so those bushings need lubricated to reduce the friction there. And so that's what these two spots are. They're often overlooked, but you don't want to you don't want to miss those. And now we're going to remove the face plate from the front of the machine. It's just held on by that one uh, thumb nut there. You can take that off and set it aside. Okay, now for oiling behind the face plate. You're going to notice your diagram shows that most of these spots get a drop for every eight hours of use. You need to spin the hand wheel to get the take-up lever up to the top so that you can reach these points. In the beginning, on the front side, there's three spots that are pretty easy to get to up at the top. We'll go through them again here slow. And this next one is behind that dot there. And then one that is located behind the needle bar clamp. And as you can see as the hand wheels turn that the needle bar goes up and down through the housing of the machine. So it needs a drop of oil right there where that bar goes through the housing. And now on to the other side. 
There's a large screw uh, that's an oiling point right there. But the interesting thing is it also can be oiled from the top side of the machine. Most manuals show it being oiled twice, however it only needs oiled once, so either from the top through that one or on the front on that big screw. This next section is the presser bar and there are three places that need oiled on it. That is one, two, and three. And then we have two spots coming up here that have to do with the presser bar lifter and the arm that it presses against to uh, release the tension on the tension unit. So there's one spot there and the second spot there. Now we come to the hook assembly. Uh, you'll notice in your diagram that there's a green dot on this. It means it gets one drop of oil every day that you use your machine. And this is two pieces of metal, uh, high speed, a lot of friction there. Definitely will help to keep that uh, properly oiled. Just one, one drop is all it needs. Next we need to remove the drip pan from the bottom of the machine. It's held on by this one large thumb nut. After removing, you'll see that it exposes the horizontal shaft that runs at high speed underneath the machine. It goes through a bronze bushing on each end and needs oiled at each end as well. There's two spots listed here and it needs oiled for every eight hours of sewing use. Okay, the rest of the oiling points underneath the machine are all points where metal rocks against metal. Uh, where the feed dog lifting and rocker arms are and there's not a lot of movement not a lot of friction there so these just get oiled for every six months okay there's a total of ten of these spots underneath this being the first and the second the third And number four, number five, number six. Now this one here, uh, the diagram actually shows two oiling points on each side of that little uh, arm there. Uh, once you oil it in one spot, the oil kind of goes where it needs, so it really only needs one drop there. And number seven. And then this one up here is number eight. It can be oiled from either this point here or also from the top side as well. These last two points are often overlooked because they're hidden up under this rocker arm. And uh, these are numbers nine and ten. That's nine and ten. Well, you are officially done oiling your Singer Featherweight, but not done with all maintenance just yet. We have another video showing you how to lubricate both your gears and your motor and clean them as well. And you can find that video link on here as well. And then if you've taken off your needle plate in the oiling process, which you probably have, you're going to need to make sure that when you put it back on, you get the positioning finger back in the slot underneath the needle plate. That is this little finger here must go in that slot underneath the needle plate. And once you're done with that, you should be ready to sew again. Uh, thank you for watching our video. If you have any questions, please uh, email us here in the shop at info at singer-featherweight.com or you can chat with us on Facebook or pick up the phone and give us a call. Have a great day.